Great. Welcome to Apologetics. The topic of discussion this evening is religion, why religion, why different religions, is there a right one, is there a wrong one, and all the different questions that come under the heading of religion and religions. Okay? Now, um, this is complicated because I haven't prepared a, a tidy talk here and, and remember the, the, the point of these discussions is, is not to find the perfect answer to the most difficult question it's to get you thinking about this, this area whatever the area is so that you do understand things a bit better as a Catholic that you're a little bit more informed but more to the point because you know a lot already it, it's not to find the perfect academic answer it's to have the experience of talking about this topic and to see some of the different areas that come up and the ideas that are there so that you have a bit more confidence to speak about things remember I'll keep underlining this it is not that you wish you had a photographic memory and could quote to every friend in every discussion the perfect catechism answer that's not the point the point is to have conversations with friends and genuine conversations um, you're interest, we did all this last week you're interested in what they have to say you, you want to share what's important to you. Um, you you do want to help them to grow you want to be faithful and truthful but it's not about winning arguments it's about witnessing to your faith having a good honest conversation admitting what you don't know and together with your friends hopefully coming a little bit nearer to the truth and going a bit deeper in, in your understanding of our faith and what the church teaches okay so I'm not going to repeat what I did last week but that's the context right so with this particular topic it's extra complicated right it's not just why do Catholics believe in the Immaculate Conception I'm not saying that's easy but you know you, you want to find out some of the the biblical reasons for that what we believe about Mary etc the question of religion and religions it's a big swirl of issues for people and it can bring up these varied topics when, when people ask you it can bring up um, human experiences some people just have had bad experiences of religious people or religions so it's not an argument you're speaking, a, you're speaking to a wound in someone's life it can bring up um, culture and society and politics what does a religion a church what does the Catholic Church what does the Muslim religion what, what does the Jewish religion what does the, what does the Buddhist religion etc what do these things represent in culture in society in politics it can bring up theological issues for people as in when people are questioning or attacking a religion they're actually questioning the very notion of, of God of, of, of prayer of the transcendent of the immaterial or um, it can bring up very personal issues in people's lives the religion that they were brought up in um, it can bring up um, genuine existential religious spiritual questions that people have about the meaning of life and, and um, the, the possibility of, of religion for me positive and negative you see so really when a discussion starts about religion in general and, and sometimes some of the aggressive questions we get and I'll come on to some of these you know why look at the evil and the harm that religions have done look at the arrogance of religions claiming that they speak the truth um, look at the, the hi hypocrisy and sinfulness of the religious people that I know all these different questions it's really important that you're having a genuine conversation to find out what the real issue is there's no point in you leaping in to defend what you think needs defending if it's not actually the real thing that someone is talking about so with this topic including another of other, a number of others please give time say to someone hey you know what, what's the real question what do you mean um, and have a conversation and see where it goes and be completely honest and natural and as we said last week undefensive you're, you're, 
your need is not to defend anything it's, it's to, to, to speak about what you know what you believe what you understand to be the truth right ok let me give um, a, a few minutes introduction and then I want us just to have some discussion and to ask each other questions and see where the discussion goes um, first of all especially in the west there can be a lot of um, criticism of, of religion yeah? and uh, let me put it under there's lots of headings I've just summarised some of them let me put it under three headings I'll try and remember this because I haven't written notes um, the decline of religion as a kind of philosophical thing the evil of religion and my bad religious experiences Th these, these can be there some people can come at you oh you're religious with, with a framework in mind which is all about the decline of religion in modern society this is a big 200 year picture about the enlightenment in the west especially so particularly in the west we have become scientific, historical we've got more knowledge than we used to do and we're realising that religion is just about ignorance and superstition and when we become more enlightened and more intelligent and more scientific we, we see the, the, that there is no need for religion religion was to fill a gap caused by ignorance and superstition and now we've got science and reason and history and, in, and, and enlightened western knowledge now look this is just um, it's one story that people have told themselves and, and it's a very popular story amongst some people still but clearly it's, it's very patronising isn't it it's, it's wrong intellectually it's very imperialistic yeah, and, and it's got so many things muddled up with it um, and it, too many things to go into now I'm, I'm not going to defend the existence of God um, I'm just saying just, just be careful before you dive into this and, and watch what someone's saying just step back a little bit and say oh that's interesting so, so this is what you think is it because you want to say from an intellectual philosophical theological point of view you want to say well hang on my belief in God is not just about superstition or what religion I was brought up in I believe there are good reasons for God for the existence of God I believe there are good reasons for believing in the transcendent this is another topic we'll come back to maybe we'll do a session on arguments for the existence of God yeah? but your main point here is, is to question this narrative hang on are you saying that only stupid believe, people believe in religion or God or prayer or are practicing Christians or Muslims or Jews so say to them first of all that's very patronising that's very imperialistic um, and actually intellectually it doesn't stand up you can talk about the incredible intelligent geniuses that you know who, who believe in religion in God you can talk about historical figures of great intelligence who believed in God or you can give your own rational reasons for believing in God or prayer or the transcendent or the first cause or whatever you want to do yeah? but just you're identifying this story and you're just questioning it in lots of different ways and secondly the, the idea that just religion is in decline is simply not true and it's interesting to point that out this, this isn't to win an argument it's just to say hang on um, in Britain it is in decline I think it was two years ago the, the, the latest census data or whatever do you remember this story being in the newspapers came out that for the first time the majority more than 50% identified as having no religion in, in the UK the nuns N-O-N-E none no religion so this is a shift so in Britain the, the secularisation theory is true in so far as it means we have become less religious fewer people identify with a religion fewer people claim to be affiliated with, with a, a religion that is true but in the world this is interesting 84% of people identify as belonging to a religious tradition 84% Whoa. 
This is uh, the latest surveys from Pew Forum. You can look it up. Just look up Pew, P-W Forum. It's, a, it's about three years old because it takes ages for these figures to catch up. It's not 50%, it's not 20 it's 84%. And that number is growing, that percentage, not the number. The proportion of people, citizens of the world, that believe in God is growing. And I can't remember what the year was. I think it said that by 2030 or something, it's going to be 87% up from 84. You can look it up. Yeah? Why is it growing? Not mainly because of conversions, but because of demographics. The Muslim birth rate is massively higher than all the other birth rates. So the Muslim population of the world is growing. The Christian population, uh, the Christian birth rate is slightly higher, slightly higher than the global average. And both the Muslim and the Christian birth rate are vastly higher than the no religions, the 16%. So demographically, the no religion people are in decline and the Muslim and the Christian are increasing and overall the religious are increasing demographically. So just there is the fact the world is not secularising. It is becoming more religious. This is Pew Forum data. It's not wish, wishful thinking. So you're just you're throwing a few facts in, you see. Oh, is religion dying? Is it just for stupid well hang on it's not dying, hang on, it's not just for stupid people, hang on, there are good arguments, you might not agree with them, but at least be open to why some intelligent, thoughtful people um, do believe in God or in religion. Okay, so challenge, challenge the secularisation thesis when people are talking about the decline of religion. Um, the second issue with religion there are many, but I'm just picking slightly, slightly randomly. Behind people's view is a negative view of religion on a large scale. The third one is the personal thing. Large scale, uh, negative view of religion. Religion is associated with harm, with evil, with backwardness, with superstition, um, and for many different reasons. Yeah, It might be religion in the news is only presented as a bad news story. It might be religious terrorism. It might be um, religious standing up for politically incorrect conservative moral, so-called conservative moral issues. Um, it might be religious leaders have said something crazy and maybe they have. It might be the sex abuse scandal and the lack of transparency, accountability within the Catholic Church today, which is a terrible scandal. Yeah? So it can be prejudice, it can be one-sided news, it can be reality. It might be historical, the Crusades, the Inquisition, burning witches. Um, yeah? Again, do you see what I'm saying? There's a whole splurge of issues going on in people's minds. You can't attack them all, but just try in your friendly, open, undefensive conversations to say, hang on, what are we really talking about here? Someone says religion is a no load of nonsense. What do they mean? Do they mean they want to have an intelligent discussion about the existence of God? Great. Do they mean they want to talk about enlightenment, history and sociology? Great. Talk to them. It's interesting, isn't it, you might say, that London is the only city in the UK where religious practice and Christianity are growing rather than shrinking. What's going on here? Um, or they want to talk particularly about the harm that they think religions are doing. And in, when you get into this topic, please admit the harm that religions do do. Don't pretend. If they point out something that's true, agree with them. Yeah. What, what, have there been some terrible evils perpetuated by religious people in the name of religion in the past and in the present? Yes agree with them, tell them it's terrible, you agree are you ashamed of some of the decisions of, of your Catholic leaders today with, with regard to the sex abuse scandals yes and you should be yes um, can religion be a tool for repressing people and stopping them thinking yes admit all these things but then just say hang on 
we've got to take a, 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 an objective look at the place of religion as well if we're going to look at the harm it's done let's look at the good it's done as well let's look at the history of, of education and healthcare in this country and, and globally because of the, the faith of, of Christians and, and always have some stories and some examples yeah? what's the first hospital in London? St Bartholomew's founded by a Catholic monk who went to Rome was, was inspired by the Christian charity in Rome and set up a hospital here um, who started all the schools in this country Christians because of their love for education um, what, what stopped the, the slavery movement Christians motivated by their faith often evangelicals and Anglicans yeah, so, so talk about the harm and talk about the good um, and ok if we're going to talk about the good of secularisation ok but let's talk about the evils of, of some atheists and some atheist systems talk about the evils perpetuated on its citizens by the, the Chinese communist government in certain times the great, the great famines of China the, the purges of Stalinist Russia um, the horrors of some of Eastern European repression in communist times um, talk about these things Do, again not don't you please your first argument if someone attacks the, the, the evil of religion in history is not to say ha but look at what the atheists have done that's, that's not a good argument but have a genuine conversation be open to criticism but just say hang on let's, let's just take the big picture here so decline of religion sociologically interesting possibly some truth in some areas but not true the evils of religion yes you've got a point but hang on there, there are many sides to this story and thirdly the, the, the suffering and the, the, the baggage that people bring when they talk about religions and this just takes great sensitivity yeah. when you're talking to people about religion God, Christianity, Catholicism moral issues please be aware that there are often deep profound questions in people's hearts and they're not speaking them very clearly and they might not even know what they are yeah? they're, they're just speaking it's coming out of the gut um, and they, it might be kind of frothy prejudice and there's nothing going on but it might be genuine concerns it might be deep hurts because of the religion they were brought up in it might be profound prejudices picked up in their secular school or their secular university department or the secular media they've grown up with it might be real longings for, for God, for prayer, for, for faith that are just hovering beneath the surface but they're fighting it and it's coming out in aggressive questions you know that we've all experienced that yeah? we half want something but we're going to fight our way against it before we actually lean in and accept it so you need, you need to just talk and this is one reason why you need to be very kind you know, don't get angry and defensive be very very kind and gentle and thoughtful and honest conversations and um, if they see that you are open to criticism but you still love God you still love your religion you still are happy and proud to be Catholic despite the evils of some sides of religion and despite the evils of some Catholics including yourself as a sinner um, if they see that, that you love God and you love your faith through all the different arguments even if they don't agree with you that will make a profound impression on them yeah. and maybe you'll get to the real topic with them you know, maybe you'll get to well I'm sorry I just saw this documentary last year about X, Y or Z or you'll get to actually I went to a Catholic school and the nuns were, were just not good examples to us of Christian love I'm afraid to say in which case say to them I'm sorry about that yeah. don't say in fact there are lots of holy nuns um, they didn't meet any so you know that's, that's the reality um, they might have had a bad experience with, with someone of religious faith um, it might be intellectual it might be experiential and especially this is the personal thing they might be struggling with a moral issue that the Catholic Church seems to stand against and maybe it does so when you identify as a Catholic 
sometimes some of the negativity against religion in general or you as a Catholic particularly is because someone is feeling threatened by the idea of being judged do you see how sensitive this is you know, we can all think of examples of this um, so just be aware to go gently that you're dealing with someone's soul and you want to as it were stand up and do your best for your Catholic faith definitely but you want to help them pastorally and compassionately um, I don't mean you, you sell out on your faith and pretend <coughs> that the moral issues don't matter if someone starts to talk to you about them then again that's another topic and we're going to come on to that aren't we we're going to come on to some of the, the difficult moral issues, the beautiful moral issues that people face. But just be aware that when someone is um, anxious about religion, it might be a fear of being judged. Okay? Right. So that's three issues that can come up and that can be in the background. What can you say about religion? Well, I want to say something a bit more theological now. I'm not going to answer every topic in justifying religion. Um, I want to, to look at this in, from two different directions one is just from um, anthropology and sociology from just looking at the world and people and the other is from the perspective of our faith in God just to give a big picture on religion in terms of so forget faith for me I'm, pre pretend I'm not a Christian I want to have a really good discussion about religion with you and the place of religion. I'm not being defensive, but just let's get serious about the topic of religion. Okay? Great. Look, anthropology, cultural anthropology, evolutionary anthropology, sociology, from, from the earliest human artifacts, whatever it, the theory, latest theory is, 70, 80,000 BC in southern Africa to the earliest Homo sapiens, possibly 100,000, possibly 250,000 years ago, to, to early hominids before then, to, to, to the possible interbreeding of Neanderthal and, and Homo sapiens. Let's just get serious about this. Religion is a part of human life. And it has been, as far as we can see, from the beginning of human existence, from the beginning of the existence of our species, Homo sapiens sapiens. Yeah? Don't just say, oh, we've developed, we've become enlightened, and we've thrown off religion. As I've said, you've already proved that sociologically that is nonsense. Intellectually it's nonsense. But just anthropologically, it's the opposite. One of the, the markers of the beginning of human existence is that we are religious creatures. That, that what makes us distinctive from other hominids other um, not what, what's the, the word wider, wider than species genuses, geni, whatever the word is yes, we're, we're the species of homo sapiens, we're part of the, the hominid genus group yeah? what makes us distinctive? well, it's hard to define but it's something to do with our, uh, with our abstract symbolic reasoning it's something to do with language, not communication all an animals communicate but language and it's something to do with our ability to think about the transcendent the beyond, the beginning, the end the future, the, the horizon the, 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 the ultimate horizon, end and the ultimate beginning, origin and the possibility of there being an existence outside the material world and the importance of burying the dead and honouring the dead um, this is not me speaking as a religious person this is ordinary bog standard cultural human anthropology and sociology we are marked by something in us that's, that's, that has a religious transcendent nature it doesn't prove there's a god but it, it's just a way of saying hang on let's take religion seriously and, and not be patronising or dismissive yeah. and therefore no surprise that that the human being as a religious being has developed in religious directions has had religious symbols religious rituals and religions no surprise that, that cultures and societies longing 
to, to know God and to express their religious instinct and their, their instinct for the transcendent, for prayer, for religious worship, for religious societies, for religious leadership, for religious moral wisdom, for religious texts. Th these are normal human things. And so when we look at the world and we see a human religious world and we see the history of religions and we see religions still flourishing today and flourishing even more, back to Pew Forum, it shouldn't surprise us. To use an old phrase, man is a religious being. I'm using the old-fashioned language. The human being is a religious being. Yeah. So just again to get the big picture, if someone's being you know, dismissive or patronising about religion, just say, hang on, religion's really interesting. And, and no surprise that that was true in the past, it's true in the present, and it always will be. And actually you can get a bit more kind of proactive and, if you like, defensive to talk about the, the, the religious instinct in a way I've done, and we could have another session on that. You know, what is it that's longing for truth, beauty, goodness, the transcendent, the spiritual, worship, and why are we longing for life after death when other animals don't seem to be doing that? So you've got a whole argument there about the religious nature of being human. But as I say, that's a particular specific topic. Okay, so just secular history, sociology, anthropology. You've got a lot of interesting stuff to talk about religion. Please do it. Now from a faith point of view, um, and I'll stop with this, have some discussion. It's a different thing. So it's connected, but the faith point you want to make is, well, hang on, if we believe in God, I know you might not, you say to your friend, but just, if, let's just say there's the possibility of God, of, of the first cause, of, of, a, of a transcendent creator. Um, isn't it, let's be open at least to the possibility that he might speak to us that he might try to communicate with him. In other words, that, that human life and, and human history globally as a species, and for you and me individually, is not just about our search for God. It's not just about humans creating religions. It's also about God's search for human beings. It's not just us reaching out to him. It's the possibility, this is all you have to do with your friends, just say, hang on, I know you may, might not believe in God, but let's just say, if there's a God, a loving God, an intelligent God, isn't it possible that he would want us to know him? Isn't it possible that he would help us to know him? And isn't it possible that he might speak to us? Whatever speak to us means. Yeah? And... And how would he do that? Would he do it through words or visions or, or prophets and gurus or through our conscience or through our religious imagination or, or through historical events? Possibly all of these. Yeah? But if we recognise that we are by nature religious beings, we would be looking out for the ways that God might speak to us. And there... Finally, we're getting to your Christian faith. You're saying, as a Christian, and in fact, I do believe that God has spoken to us in history through the Jewish people. And then, not just that he's spoken to us, but he's come to be with us by sending his son, Jesus Christ, who is not just a teacher, a prophet, a guru, a leader, who is not just son of God in the weak sense of a creature who, who comes from God which we all do but is actually himself divine who shares in the nature of God who, who is God made man God made one of us that, that God became man that God became a human being he didn't just speak into our history or into our hearts he stepped into our world and came to be with us and share his life with us and you can go further and lived and died for us and, and wants to bring us to heaven and, and 
in doing this wants to unite us with him in the Christian religion this, this is what Christianity is it is not just another religion it's not just us reaching out to God it's our faith that God has reached out to us and invited us to know him by knowing his son Jesus in his family, in his community which is the Christian church ok so again that's a whole other topic that we can spend an evening on whenever in December or January if you come back we can do a topic what is the Catholic Church or why do we believe in the Christian religion do you see I've just done two very simple things actually I've said I've planted two big ideas in your mind when you're talking about religion one is to say isn't it interesting that that religion is so much a part of human life and history and this is just interesting and curious and what does it say about history what does it say about being human and the other is a bit more personal a bit more Christian it's to say well hang on if you just don't believe in God and if it's, that's absolutely your conviction of course you, you're not going to take religion too seriously but if you would please just hold open the possibility of a loving intelligent God then you can see that the idea of religions and the idea of Christianity actually makes sense doesn't it and at least your friend might say actually yeah I don't believe in Jesus I don't even believe in God but I can see that your world view that there's a loving creator God who might want to come and help us and might want to, to, to enter into our world it's not mad and if you've helped someone to see that you're not mad that's quite a big thing isn't it yeah okay so there we go my very unrehearsed thoughts about the questions that people bring and two, two thoughts about religion and here are the questions that you asked about religion and you can see why I didn't want to go through them all because there's no time but that the, the thoughts I've just shared with you give some hints on how to answer them here are your questions if there's only one God how do you explain the existence of other religions and sacred writings well do you see you've got an answer yeah well if, if we are naturally religious of course we, we, we search for him in different ways and we come up with different answers and historically at different places in different times people have found different forms of religious expression yeah of course why Catholicism when there are many other faiths and other Christian churches which believe in God well again we can come back to this as a topic but you see you've got some tools for that why do we believe in one religion when I say believe in I mean I know the existence of many religions but why do I believe that there is a as it were a priority to one religion Christianity and a priority to one form of Christianity the Catholic Church well I believe that because I believe that God has reached out to us in a unique way he's speaking to us maybe in many different ways and many different religions are responding to him but I believe he's reaching out to us in his son Jesus in a unique way which is why Christianity is so important and I believe that Jesus brought people together in his church in his family in a unique way which is why the Catholic Church is so important because it unites us with his historical family in a unique way it's not that every other Christian is separated from Jesus at all but there is a uniqueness about the Catholic Church we believe as Catholics why the Christian faith and not another religion well again I just admit acknowledge there are many other religions many other good things in many different religions but, but there is a special gift in Christianity because we're called into that I believe by, by God and by the Son of God can you not exercise your faith outside the Christian community well in some ways yes you can, you can exercise your love your prayer your, your goodness um, and there is so much goodness in people of no faith and other faiths but I want to emphasize well I want to emphasize that yeah so we're not fundamentalists um, we believe in a, an 
inclusive exclusivity or an exclusive inclusivity right we're not just exclusivists who think that there is um, that everyone outside of a certain group is excluded but we're not just inclusivists who think that it doesn't matter whether you belong or not we want to say it is really important that people come to know Jesus Christ and come to know his love and his church and his sacraments we believe that it's really important and that's why we want to share the gospel but we also know that God's love and mercy and, and even the love and the grace of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit can touch people in ways that are unknown to us so yeah inclusive exclusivists um, or not, that I, I made that phrase up a phrase I'm not making up is, is a theological phrase called the, the universal particular the universal particular in other words Jesus is, is unique yeah we believe he's, he's the only saviour but he came to save all people and, and he touches all people's lives in different ways so it's not to close the door it's to open it and etc there's lots of you've got lots more questions here about religions and I'm not answering them all but I'm saying here's a framework yeah, be open ask questions and, uh, and have some of these key ideas in mind right I'm going to stop the recorder and then we can have some chat.